In the weeks following George Floyd's death, conversations have sparked nationwide on the best way to improve racial equality. News 4 is committed to continuing those conversations. Tonight, News 4's Carice Jackman sits down with some of the next generation of activists to hear more about the movement going on in Nashville and the change they hope to see. So let's talk about, uh, we, and we already got on the topic, but let's talk about Nashville and Tennessee specifically. Is there anything that's been going on right now that you found particularly, particularly encouraging and then some things that may not be that case? I just want to like talk a little bit about mm -hmm. uh, Tennessee Organizing for Power Statewide. Uh, that is a coalition uh, that was founded by um, folks at Free Hearts, myself, uh, Gideon's, Army. Gideon's Army, folks at the Highlander Center, um, uh, Knoxville Black Mamas Bailout, Concerned Citizens for Justice, people from throughout the state of Tennessee who decided like that there were things that we needed to do together that we can't do apart. You know, that is a quote stolen from and, and like you uh, that Ashley Wooder Henderson often quotes. Um, and so we came together in, you know, last year because we were like, oh, we want to redefine public safety. And I think in Nashville, I'm really deeply excited by the work of the National People's Budget Coalition and the work they've been doing, or rather we've been doing. Um, and just to name that we started in uh, November of mm -hmm. 2019. 19. And uh, many of the organizations who are a part of that have been doing this work to divest from cops and cages, divest from uh, the juvenile Justice Center and invest in our communities. And so um, the work that we have been doing, we've been talking to our communities. And our communities have been saying, actually, this system doesn't work for us. And so to be able to come together as a coalition uh, to define this moment, to capture this moment and say, actually, the, the message that we have been articulating for years has been defund cops and cages. And to work through that moment together has been absolutely beautiful. And then on the other side, we've seen elected officials who... Um, <laughs> ran under the idea that they were progressive. And when it came time to be progressive, y'all, when it came time uh, to advocate and work for the people, they failed our communities. No it was either. silent. They no were, no they were silent. Seen. And I'm like, where is your courage? Either you lack courage or you're incompetent. Like, let's be clear. And if, you, and if you're confused, because this is a new concept to you, although we've been talking about it for years, Song has been talking about it for years, Free Hearts has been talking about it for years, um, Guinea's Army has been talking about it for years. So if, if you're confused, then let's talk about it, right? Um, and if you don't know which way to decide, I, I, again, I would ask you to reflect on what side of history do you want to be on? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a part of, uh, on the side uh, that chooses not to defend black lives, not to invest in our communities, um, or do you want to be on, uh, right? Or do you want to be on a side that chose, like, chose uh, to follow the leadership and to honor the voices of people who called, who demanded, who marched in the streets, who showed up the city council to say, hey, invest in our communities. And so I'm deeply confused um, <laughs> and shocked by elected officials at this moment. And on that point, like like the, the, the discouraging thing, and I think Erica was speaking to the, is the lack of creativity. It's not only is there, is there seemed to be a canyon between where the community, ha the community is and the community conversations that have been happening for decades, right? And our elected officials, but there's also like a disconnect on literally the narrative. We're sitting in a room Right, with their students and young people from Nashville taking their own own life into their own hands and making the change that they want to see. What's missing on these walls is six months before this happened, the students sent letters out to both the leadership, Ben West, and also the owners of, of all of these shops and said, if you don't desegregate, which we want to see, we're coming. And they came. And we're literally in that exact same moment. Before we even started to like, once we became solid, because the encouragement that I'm feeling at this time is being able to work in solidarity with other groups that have been leading this conversation in Nashville. Once we became that, once we became a unified front, we reached out to folks. The idea of defunding and divesting was a non-starter from our leadership here. And we literally had to start having a conversation with the community members because the community has a po the power. I think to your question, the most discouraging thing that I have been seeing, I echo a lot of what they both said. Um, a month ago, um, we were all at a protest um, in light of George Floyd being murdered. And Mayor Cooper got on stage to a crowd full of black people and told those black people that he does not support defunding the police. And I think that statements and stances like that is complete violence. Um, we see 
see Governor Lee, who went from he does not support, you know, moving the bus from the Capitol to the Tennessee State Museum to today the Capitol Commission literally voted. Um, to move the bus to the Tennessee State Museum. Um, I think the responses from the elected officials have been so discouraging, but I think the unity amongst the organizations and the black people here in Nashville has really warmed my heart. Um, I don't think, well, I've only been in Nashville for about five years. I've never seen as much unity as we have now. Um, I think the unification of our people is super, super important. And I truly believe that before we can have unity, unity with any other people, um, with white people, with Chinese people, with any other people, we have to have unity amongst black people ourselves. So I think that's what we, I've been seeing personally um, here in Nashville, and it's been really encouraging for me. I just want to be clear. Um, Fred Hampton has a quote, right? We don't fight racism. Well, he says we don't fight fire with fire. We, yes. we fight fire with water. Yes. We don't fight racism with, with racism. We fight racism with solidarity. Yes. And that's what we've been trying to organize to do because we know that this racism here is so coded and so protected and insulated and through policies, procedures, uncreative elected officials, that it's gonna take solidarity from the ground to force them to change. And it seems like we have a lot of momentum behind us and people are ready to be active. And you feel like this time is different? This time, you, you, do you feel it in the air? <laughs> Absolutely, because of the work that we've been doing to educate people before this moment. Since the, since the Ferguson uprising, people have been learning, participating in groups, really having tough conversations. So when this moment came back around, people were more prepared because unfortunately, at the, the changes that we were asking for or that people were demanding with the Ferguson uprising, once we began to track them, it was clear they wasn't changing anything, right? If anything, police have killed more people since the Ferguson uprising. And so with that, at, with that wind at our sails, we're going full steam ahead at this point.